Is that in the shot? Oh yeah. What are you doing? Get it out of the shot. Hi, I'm Brian. And I'm Nick. And today we're gonna to be talking about timeline management in Premiere. So back when I first started editing and filmmaking, one of the biggest challenges I had was keeping my timelines organized. And when I would have directors come to my computer and I would show them a project, I would have to go through and explain like, oh, this clip is here and that clip is there. And it's this way because of that and this and that. And it wasn't until I really started working in an environment where we would have to kind of move projects from system to system when I really realized I needed to hunker down and really focus more on timeline management, on project management. So what can happen is if I'm moving a project from one station to another, from one editor to another, it should be at the point I can just have my edit on the timeline and the editor can just jump right in and take off where I left off. There's a lot of files in modern editing. As editors, we have to deal with a lot of stuff. Uh, that can be footage, that can be photos, that can be music. So where are you gonna put all this? When I'm setting up a new project, the first thing I do is set up my folder structure. There's places for project files, media, and assets that I get along the way. It's absolutely essential that you keep the footage from your shoot organized and delineated based on camera and card. You have to know, looking at the footage that you've copied, that you have all of it from the shoot. Keeping all of your files in a predetermined structure allows for other editors to work on your project and it allows for you to go back to projects in the past and know exactly where stuff is immediately. Within projects, it's much the same, right? I use uh, folders for timelines, for media, for assets, for compositions. When functionally editing, the way that you go about it is going to depend on the type of content you're producing. If you're working on narrative media, then you may organize by scenes, angles, and takes. With non-narrative projects, most of the projects that we receive are interview takes and b-roll folders. So we have to create the scenes in post. So there's a couple basic steps you can follow every time you're going through kind of a basic edit. And I'm gonna be mostly talking about edits that include a lot of b-roll, some interviews. The one thing I like to do when I start building out my project is I like to build out a number of different timelines. And one of those timelines is gonna be for all of my interview shots. I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna merge those clips together the A cam and the B cam I'm gonna go through and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take those and I'm gonna go and cut them up and cut out the parts where you have like questions or mess ups and basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to make kind of a smaller portion of the interview shot. What's left after that first pass is the interview with all of its usable parts. That's what we'd like to call an interview string out. And with this interview string out, what I can do is I can go through in the interview string out and kind of put cuts in spots to kind of separate the different thoughts and the different ideas and the different topics the interview subject is talking about. What we're looking for at this point are the parts of the interview that are gonna help us tell the story the most efficiently. And going through that, it's gonna be important to come up with some sort of labeling system that works with the, all the editors you're gonna be working with, whether that's colors or notes, to kind of denote like what are gonna be the best clips you're gonna use, maybe clips that are relevant to a certain topic. Having a cut down interviews timeline reduces the amount of time it takes searching through bins or interview clips for the clips that you wanna use in your final. One tool that we've started using that has helped us speed up our editing process has been captioning. A simple way to make these captions is to actually export a file of your string out from Premiere and upload it straight to YouTube. It generates about a 95% accurate closed captioning for it and you can lay that back onto the timeline. What this allows us to do is search for specific phrases in the timeline as it gives time code to the dialogue. And so then another timeline you can put together is a timeline for your B-roll. You can kind of do sort of a similar process for your B-roll. You can go ahead and you can lay down all the B-roll shots that you have through and cut it up into sections where, you know, certain, certain B-roll might be shot in one location or with one other person. And you can kind of cut it down to the portions that you're only going to be using for the shots. In the end, you're gonna find yourself with two different timelines, one for your interviews, all cut down to the best parts, and all with your B-roll, all cut down to the best parts. And that's when you're finally going to move it into your main editing timeline. And I like to use a technique called the pancake method, where I'll go into Premiere and I'll actually layer one timeline on top of another, and then pull clips down from the top timeline into the bottom timeline, the bottom timeline being the timeline that I'm actually gonna be editing on. So within the timeline itself, you have one layer for your A cam and one layer for your B cam. You're always gonna keep those intact 
If you're picking a shot from the A cam or the B cam, you're never going to want to delete that shot. You're just going to want to disable it. That way, if you ever need to go back to it, if you never need to change the edit, the clip, that clip is still there. Another important element of project organization is versioning. Every time we open up a Premiere project, we create a new version of that project file. Functionally, what this does is it creates a set in stone version history. If we need to go back to a cut from last week, then we have a definite record of where we were at that point. Same with the timeline. If you're about to make a large change to your edit, just copy a timeline, create a new version, and then go ahead. So once you go through and you cut down your interview to where it's at a good spot, you can go ahead and you can start pulling down your B-roll that you have from your B-roll sequence. You can go ahead and layer that on the third layer on top of that. And the B-roll is just gonna be supporting the interview in spots where it's applicable. And it also can be used in strategic ways to cut out certain parts where you have certain edits in the interview that you need to cover with another shot. It gives you a lot of flexibility to kind of build a story where it needs to be built. But it's always really important to look at those three base layers there. Your first one, your A cam, your second one, your B cam, and then third is gonna be your B roll. And kind of stick to as flat as you can to that because it's gonna help you in the long run because it's gonna help other directors who come in understand what's going on or the clients that are looking at understand what's going on. Having a timeline organized like that delivers a lot of confidence in your edit as well. Having something completely unorganized with clips everywhere kind of indicates chaos and the edit's not going well. So you wanna give that picture that everything's working, that everything is working well together. Even if the project is kind of a mess, you know, as long as it doesn't look like a mess. Learning to use an editing software is the easy part of the process of editing. Becoming faster, more optimized, and having workflows that allow you to create consistent work quickly are some of the real finer points, and organization is a big step to that. And ultimately, one person's work way of organizing might not be the same as another person. As long as the people you're working with are all on the same page with their organization, things will go smoothly. You're gonna find your editing process to be so much more efficient.